Hello everyone and welcome to a very important game from round 7 of the US Chess Championship. It's Fabiano Caruana versus uh, Ray Robson and it's a very important game for many reasons. Uh, for Fabi it's because he already lost two games so he took a real beating on his classical rating but also on his chances to actually contend for the first prize in the US Chess Championship. And uh, for Ray Robson uh, who so far has not lost a single game he's doing excellent and uh, a draw or win against Fabi would definitely propel him towards uh, winning, winning the whole thing. So let's see uh, what happened here as the game is uh, qu quite a lot to, to take in. Uh, so Fabi with the white pieces opens with c4. He goes for the English opening. We have e5 by Robson, knight to c3, knight to f6, and now g3 going for the Karls Bremen system. And now bishop to b4 attacking the knight here, the missile of um, uh, variation. We have e4. Uh, we had this position quite a lot lately, so of course you guys already know that grabbing this pawn doesn't really do anything. So black just continues development, knight to c6, bishop to g2, and d6 now. Uh, we have h3, h3 is very rare here, uh, usually in just knight g to e2 is played, but here h3 very rare from Fabi, uh, bishop to e6, continuing development, putting pressure on this pawn, and d3, nicely defending this pawn, and now castles here is a known move, but uh, Robson goes for knight to, to d7, and it is already as of move 7 that we have a completely new game. So he's saying to Fabi, I'm ready to play f5, uh, open up the position, and it's gonna be a... Um, uh, it, it's gonna be a crazy game. Uh, Fabi says, all right, let's see it. He plays knight to e2, prepares the castle uh, to safety, and now f5. So what do you do here? Well, Fabi just castles. He doesn't mind uh, black capturing or pushing the pawn, doesn't really do anything. Uh, for example, if uh, we, we could even sacrifice a pawn here to kind of open up the white king, uh, but we don't have any anything to attack the white king with and it's uh it's a very important pawn that we've just uh, thrown away basically because we don't want to allow f5 uh f5 we don't want to capture here and allow knight captures on f4 then the bishop will be hanging so maybe not the the greatest of ideas so here um robson just castles and fabi now pushes f4 himself uh, we have bishop captures on c3, now this bishop is no longer very useful, uh, the king is not on e1, so it's not even pinning the knight, and all of our pawns are on dark squares, so here bishop captures on c3, we have knight captures on c3, and now f captures on e4. And uh, it's always a question of whether to capture or not, maybe you could improve the position with knight to c5, put some pressure on black's, on white's position, uh, but okay, here we have f captures on e4, knight captures on e4, now Fabi improved the position of his knight, and the h6, taking away uh, the g5 square from the white knight. We have g4 by Fabi, now maybe getting ready to push this pawn all the way to f5, uh, and Robson now uh, trades on f4. We have pawn captures, bishop captures, and now d5, and here black can be very happy. He got rid of everything, he uh, almost completely developed, uh, and uh, he has a very, very, very enjoyable position. The white king is uh, somewhat open, so we'll see what happens. However, uh, you do not want to trade down too much because uh, white still has the bishop pair. So c captures, bishop captures, and now queen to d2. Connecting the rooks, developing the queen, knight to d4, and now rook a to e1. And Fabi's pieces are now fully mobilized. We have knight to e6 going after this bishop, uh, and of course Fabi saves it, bishop to g3. Now it's a question whether black should consider c6 right away as you do not want this c7 pawn to remain a target forever. Uh, but first he goes for rook captures on f1 check, rook captures and now knight d to c5, um, putting more pressure on the knight here. Uh, and here you could uh, consider something like knight captures, knight captures and rook to f5, you could force some trades this way, for example bishop captures, king captures or rather even queen captures and you'd get this position and it seems that white um, is not to be preferred here because you have, uh, well, such a loose king and the queens are still on the board, uh, but it's actually... Uh, a very enjoyable position for white. You're attacking um, a, a lot, you're putting a lot of pressure on the queen side here, and your rook is already developed. Unlike black's rook, uh, that's not developed, and the d3 pawn is of course off limits. If you capture it, just rook d5 hangs the knight, and if you try something like queen captures, of course this hangs the knight here. Uh, for example, queen captures on d3, rook captures on c5, and it seems like you can win the rook back, for example, queen d4 check, but bishop f2 saves our rook. So. Uh, it's a very tricky position whether you should go for it or not. Fabi decides to go for, for queen to c3. It ensures more trades, and trades are what he's looking for. 
Uh, so knight captures on e4, d captures on e4. Now Fabi gets a beautiful pass pawn here. Uh, bishop to c6 and now queen to b3, pinning the knight. Uh, and uh, what do you do here? Uh, well, you have to defend it. But first, queen to d4 check, king to h2, uh, and now rook to e8. Of course, this is how we will defend. We want to activate our rook as well. And then uh, later on, we're going to unpin so our knight can move. So rook to d1, Fabi chases the queen away. And now what do you do with the queen? You could keep the queens on the board with something like queen to c5, or you could go for a queen trade, queen a4, queen to b6 also offers a queen trade. Uh, but you should definitely do something because that c7 pawn uh, is hanging. The knight here is pinned the knight cannot move so here queen to a4 uh trading the queens ensures the unpinning over knight on e6 and uh, this is what, uh, what robson goes for so queen captures bishop captures on a4 and now rook to d5 this is a fine move by fabi this rook to d5 idea uh, as it ensures uh, the knight um uh, the knight stays on this uh, square. The problem is if you go for something uh, to, to, to activate it right away, there's no square for it. For example, knight to g5 is a nice square, but uh, we're going to capture on c7. So you, you haven't really accomplished anything here. If you capture on e4, uh, we don't mind. Uh, I mean, okay, the material is equal. We can play rook to a5, go after the bishop, go after this pawn. So uh, maybe not uh, not the way to go so instead bishop to c6 attacking the rook rook to e5 now fabi would very much enjoy trading rooks here then he would have the bishop pair against the bishop and knight and it uh, it is definitely favorable since the game is on both sides of the board so g5 here uh, and bishop to f1 now trying to shift the bishop over to uh, to this uh, c4 square as the king is still on this diagonal so king to g7 unpinning and now king to g2 both players starting um, at the act activation of their kings uh, king to f6 and now king to f2 so looks looks a bit scary but the king is perfectly fine there uh, and now you could consider a move like rook to d8 as now the king is defending the knight maybe you can activate and then maybe you can try something but okay king e3 prevents rook d2 the game continues but the rook remains in the game however robson decides that uh, the the trading of the rooks is uh, well either favorable or you know uh, insignificant uh, so he decides to go for knight to f4 and Fabi very happily trades the rook so rook captures bishop captures and now king to e3 and now we have this end game where uh, the bishop pair is fighting against the bishop and knight uh, with both kings very active king to e5 uh, Robson's king uh, is a little bit more active occupying the e5 square whereas Fabi's king is on the e3 square and now bishop to e1 uh, we're gonna kick away this king very easily so we don't have to worry about that king being overly active so knight back to e6 bishop to c4 now uh, we have bishop to g6 putting pressure on the pawn here but the just b4 we don't really care about this pawn because if black captures it bishop c3 check and we win that bishop uh, so after b4 we have a6 and now we have uh, a6 and now we have a4 uh, knight to f4 now putting pressure on the h3 pawn and now fabi's idea was bishop to c3 check king to d6 and now bishop to g7 going after this pawn and now if you trade for example captures captures uh, then this knight is stuck here guarding this uh, uh g uh, g5 pawn and it's not a great square for the knight uh, you know it's uh uh, for example, bishop to f1 uh, could, could even get trapped there. Okay, you have the f4 square, but you're going to lose the g5 pawn, so not not the greatest. And white can even uh, shift this bishop over to f6 to still put pressure on this pawn while controlling these two squares. The bishop covers e6, so the bishop square will really restrict the movements uh, of the black king. So instead, after bishop to g7, we have h5 uh, trying to trade off this way, but now bishop back to f1. Fabi defends the h3 pawn captures captures and now knight back to e6 uh, we have bishop to f6 as we said the uh, bishop is nicely controlling these squares not allowing the king to go anywhere and we're still putting pressure on g5 so the knight can't really move so king d7 uh, a5 now it makes sense to put our pawns on dark squares since uh, robson has a light square bishop uh, we have king back to d6 bishop to c4 now and king to d7 we have bishop to d5 putting pressure on the pawn here and now uh, what do you do? You could uh, try to uh, move the knight and defend it like this, but that doesn't really work since the bishop covers that square. Uh, and you really like your knight here. It prevents the king from going anywhere deeper into the position. So just c6, uh, bishop back to c4, and now bishop to h7. Black really has nothing to do here other than wait and see what uh, Fabi does. So bishop to d4. 
you don't really want to capture this because like we said the knight here is an excellent piece just guarding the king uh, uh, preventing the white king from reaching uh, deeper into the position so bishop g6 uh, and now bishop to f6 we have bishop to h7 and now bishop to f1 uh, you could eliminate the knight uh, yes you do win the d4 square for, for your king for example you, you could even win the pawn but now it's bishops of opposite colors uh, and uh, well it doesn't matter if you're up a pawn this will be an easy draw for black since uh, in bishops of opposite colors uh, it, it's uh, it, it's possible to draw even when you're down material so bishop h7 we have bishop back to f1 and now king to e8 so robson is saying okay do we do we draw this or what do you want to do uh, but fabi already uh, lost uh, two of the previous games and this is classical time format he has nothing to lose his he lose here he can only win uh, so of course he's going to keep pushing bishop d3 bishop g6 bishop to c4 now king to d7 uh, black has uh, an uh, other idea uh, is to either wait for the for the 50 move rule or to get some sort of a threefold repetition so bishop to d4 now asking do you want to trade of course not bishop back to h7 we have bishop to a7 uh, now bishop to g6 fabi trying uh, all of uh, all of the squares <laughs> bishop to b3 king e7 bishop to c2 and now king to d7 uh, we have king f3 bishop to h7 bishop back to e3 and now bishop to g6 and now bishop to d3 uh, we have king to e7 king to e2 king to e8 and now king to d2 we have king to f8 now comes bishop to c5 check uh, and uh, do you capture the bishop now well it's a very interesting position for example if you capture the bishop now then b captures on c5 uh, yes you want all of these dark squares uh, for your uh, for your king but the problem is this position is a dead draw and it seems like uh, fabi uh, unknowingly offered the draw by playing this uh, offer uh, of a bishop uh, but maybe robson decided again and maybe uh, it's hard to imagine that Robson wanted more than a draw from this position maybe he just trusted Fabi that Fabi could win this position because after captures captures uh, notice how uh, there is no square for the white king to go deeper into the position all of these squares are covered so you only have to worry about the e5 square and that's easily taken care of for example king e7 king c3 we're gonna play bishop to f7 and we don't even care king d4 we're gonna play anything bishop to e2 if king e5 we're just gonna go back bishop to e6 and there's no way for the black for the white king to go anywhere you can't push any pawns uh the light square bishop is completely useless here there's nothing you can do here this is a dead draw so what happened here did fabi uh, knowingly offer this did uh, you know they both just miss it it's hard to say maybe if some of you caught uh, caught an interview after the, the game maybe they talked about it a little bit but okay king to g7 was played he didn't grab the bishop and now king to e3 now the king is already closer and now uh, it could be a bit of a problem because this is one very important tempo so king g8 bishop to c4 now again attacking the knight uh, and king uh, sorry now bishop to f7 we have bishop to e7 by fabi grabbing more space here uh, and now we have king to g7 again uh we we can't really make prog progress here by by capturing anything because then bishop captures also wins this pawn so e5 now uh, a very important pawn push and now king to g8 uh you of course know that um uh, if 50 moves are played without any pieces or pawns being captured or without pawns being moved it's a draw by the 50 move rule so moving this pawn uh, was very important uh, so king to d2 we have king to g7 now bishop back to d3 still trying to figure out a way into the position uh, because as long as this knight is here we cannot uh, uh, go anywhere so king back to g8 bishop to f5 now and king to g7 uh, we have king to d3 knight to f4 check king to d4 and now knight back to e6 with check king c4 uh, and now king to g8 and here uh, again a very interesting position uh where uh you could uh enter the position but it's it's still not enough this is uh the the problem of the end games you it, it doesn't matter how much you work it's still a draw <laughs> because if bishop captures bishop captures and king c5 yes you are going after those pawns but bishop captures and g4 king b6 we're gonna play king f7 go after the bishop here bishop captures and g5 king captures on b uh sorry king to e6 king captures on b7 and after let's say bishop to e2 defending this pawn uh now you can capture this pawn and uh, lose this pawn still a draw or you can defend this pawn then we defend this pawn it's still a draw 
uh, equal material bishops of opposite colors. So instead, after this king to g8 move, Fabi found a different idea. He decided to sacrifice a piece, uh, and now he played bishop captures on g5. So you save your bishop pair for 70 moves, and then you sacrifice it. So let's see, let's see his idea, and he's also discover uh, allowing this discovery. So knight captures on g5, opening up a discovery here with check. Uh, the only move you can play, king to c5. Now comes bishop to d5. Uh, we have bishop to c8, going after the pawn here, and now is the critical moment of the game. The game is uh, objectively still a draw, but uh, finding uh, a move that draws for black uh, requires uh, a lot of thought. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to figure it out uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations on being a true master of the endgame. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight to e6 with check. No, that's not it. That's what Fabi played. That's what uh, uh, Robson played. Uh, and it's... Uh, it's similar to the to the move that uh, doesn't lose, but it uh, comes with one very important difference. The actual move is knight to e4 check, and this is how we get a draw. The crucial point here is that we take away the d6 square from the white king, because now after king to b6, we have this c5 move. This allows us to draw. We also guard the, the pawn here, and after b captures on c5, we play king f7. And now after bishop captures on b7, we simply trade, captures, captures, knight captures on c5 with check, guarding this pawn. And now the point is, after king to b6, we play knight to d7 check, and uh, the thing is, the king is enough to stop both of these pawns, and the knight only has to stop this pawn. And that's very easily done. King captures on a6, we're gonna play king to e6, now king b7, ready to advance the past pawn, but just king captures on e5. Because if you ever push this pawn to a6, knight c5 check and the knight captures the a6 pawn so of course uh, you're gonna go after the knight but we just play knight c5 again we protect the a6 square then king b6 or king c6 goes after the knight knight to a6 blocking the pawn now again we attack it king to b6 knight to b8 again we're ready to sacrifice our knight for the pawn and if king to b7 just knight back to d7 and again if you push a6 knight c5 check picks up the pawn so we did a full circle but it's enough to draw the game but in the game after bishop to c8 uh, uh, bishop to knight to e4 was not played, uh, knight to e6 check was played. And this is much, much different because now Fabi doesn't have to go to b6, Fabi plays king to d6. And this is just much, much stronger. Now c5 does nothing because bishop captures on e6 comes with check or even better. Uh, king captures on d5, threatening bishop captures on e6 with check. So uh, you have to play king f7 to guard material here, but now bishop captures on b7. We have bishop to c4, guarding the a6 pawn, bishop captures on c6, and now knight to d4. So okay, maybe you can still fight your upper piece, but now bishop to d5 check. Fabi gives up the, uh, his last bishop, bishop captures, king captures, and now knight to b5. So can the knight stop all of these pawns? Uh, very unlikely. We have g5 uh, king to e7 now comes g6 uh, the pawns are now creating a wall against the black king so you can't really do all that much uh, we have knight to c3 check king to c6 now comes knight to a2 going after this pawn uh, and Fabio, of course, advances it to b5. So a captures on b5, king captures on b5, knight to c3 check, now king c4, not allowing this knight to cause any, any problems here, guarding these squares, and if knight here, you will not have this square for your knight. So knight to a4 was played, now king to b4. Uh, chasing away the knight. Again, these two squares are not available. Knight back to b2, and only now do we push our pawn to a6. We have knight to d3 check, king to b5, and now knight to f4. But you don't really care about those pawns, just... Um, uh, you, you can simply advance it, uh, but you still have to be very careful. For example, if you if you push this pawn g7, then uh, the, the king can still reach it, and maybe some knight to d5 to here. Uh, it doesn't work, but still, you have to be careful. Fabi still advances the pawn to g7. We have king to f7, and now a7. So what do you play here? Knight to d5, of course. The knight is a menace up until the very last moment. Uh, now, if you bring a queen into the game, of course, knight c7 check picks up the queen, and it's still a draw. So here, uh, what you have to play is, uh, uh, we can even show it if you guys want. Knight c7 check, uh, the king will go, let's say, to b6. We're going to capture king b7. You can pick up this pawn, captures, and now, of course, we are much, much faster than the white king. We're going to pick up this pawn as well. So instead, after knight to d5, Fabi played g8, check, and he 
brought a bishop into the game, not a queen, because it serves the same purpose and it's much, much more stylish. Uh, why wouldn't we w want that? Uh, and it was in this position on move 90 that Ray Robson resigned the game. And uh, unfortunately, uh, he is no longer uh, in the lead of the US Chess Championship. But Fabi broke his losing streak. I mean, it's incredibly rare for, for a player like Fabi to lose two classical games in a row. That's, uh, I believe that's unheard of. I mean, I'm sure it happened, but uh, not in recent times. Uh, but yeah, here, of course, you resign uh, because if you capture the bishop, a8 uh, brings a queen into the game with check. Of course, we pick up the knight, so there's nothing there. Uh, and if you avoid this king e7, we simply pick up the knight and then we don't have to worry about the check. And then we're just going to promote our pawn to a queen. So yeah, uh, after this uh, beautiful g8 uh, bishop check, uh, Robson resigned and an excellent victory for Fabiano Caruana, who is now back in the tournament, uh, which is, sounds odd because after losing two games, you shouldn't be able to be back in the tournament, uh, but he's only trailing by one point. So uh, behind the leaders, uh, Lenderman, Wesley So and Samuel Sebian. Uh, so it's still possible for Fabi to actually win the US Chess Championship. It's not going to be easy, but there are still four more rounds to go. And if there will be tie breaks, uh, maybe it's even enough for him to uh, equalize with uh, with the leaders, uh, and then maybe he can uh, play the tie breaks. So uh, I think it's still possible for him to win. Uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, that's the power of the bishop pair. Even when the game is completely equal for like 50 moves, uh, the bishop pair almost always prevails. Uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I, would like, I, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to David Sorodi. I hope you had a good one and that you've uh, spent it with uh, many friends, uh, you know, uh, 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 and with uh, joy and chess. Uh, and I would like to thank Mr. Hoodie Guy, Tom Deralo, You'll Never Walk Alone, and HB for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the US Chess Championship, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.